Hi, this is Rob Diori, uh, Chief Technology Officer of Blue Thread Technologies again. Um, today we're going to do a demo of some of our cloud uh, storage adapters. I'm going to start out by uh, doing one to the file system just so we have a, kind of a point of reference. So I have one defined already for my file system. Um, I've got a bunch of different sites up here. This one is mapped to um, a site collection that is externalizing the content of the file system. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload a few documents here. Seven documents, you can see varying sizes. I'm going to go ahead and upload those. And as they're being processed, it's going to take them and externalize them to the, the file system. You kind of saw this in the, in the first uh, introductory video we put out. Um, so if I click on any of these documents, go to the details, you can see that the content's been externalized. It's not actually sitting in the, the SQL database any longer. If I go out to the blob store here, you can see the documents. It created a um, year day, I'm sorry, year month day uh, folder structure. Here are the actual blobs themselves. Uh, if I just click on any one of these, it'll actually open up the document just as it would if it was sitting in a SQL database. So from an end user perspective, uh, there's you know no difference in the in the experience here. It's a PNG file. So that's kind of our base level set. Um, you know we have content that's going into SharePoint uh, being externalized to the file system. The next one we're going to do here is for um, Azure. Um, still CTP. It's not not a production you know cloud implementation yet, but you know we do have a a provider for that. So I'm going to go create. A new storage profile here. I'm going to pick the right web app. I'm going to pick our Azure site. I'm going to externalize the content to Azure. I need to go get the connection string. I've got all the connection strings conveniently uh, laid out here in this document for me. So, uh, just a simple connect. Uh, the what breakdown of the connection string? A base URI. You don't have to specify that. It'll use the the default that that Microsoft provides. Um, you need to provide an account name, which in this case is Storage Point. The key, um, and then you can uh, you know provide the name of a container. It's effectively a bucket um, inside of uh, an object container inside of um, the Blob Storage uh, capability in Azure, where the content's going to be uh, put. Um, we we by default folder stuff you can turn that on. Um, we should compress it because that'll actually compress it before it hits the wire. I'm gonna go ahead and test that. The test was successful, so it was able to reach the cloud, um, put a test file up there, create a folder, do all the operations that you would normally do. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Uh, while it's doing that, um, here's just a uh, an application that you can get off of CodePlex. Um, it's it's an explorer. It allows you to explore the different services, uh, different Azure services um, in this UI. You can see right now, it's just got we've got a couple containers sitting out there. Um, the storage profile has been created. If I go over to my Azure site, I say upload a few doc same same seven documents. I'm going to pick pick them. Click OK. It's going to take those documents and it's going to push those up to Azure. So instead of the local file system, instead of SQL Server, it's going to push them up to um, the Azure Blob Storage. Go back over here to the Explorer. If I kind of hit open here again, you'll see the container's been created. And you can see all the files are sitting up there. So now we've got seven blobs sitting in there which represent the seven files you can see you know that some of them have been compressed quite heavily uh, depending on the format again seven documents click one go to the details there's the actual connection string um, so again you can see the content sitting there and you, you really don't see much difference from a retrieval perspective um, so it went back that was about a 700k TIFF um, that was compressed uh, you know here's a large text file Again, compress so it, it didn't take long to bring that back. Um, this one's a PDF. That one's probably going to take a little bit longer to bring back, but still, only a couple seconds to pull back. You know, a half, half a meg or you know, a little bit higher than that meg uh, PDF. So, 
not much difference in performance between the, you know, the content sitting locally and, and sitting up on the cloud. Um, next one we want to do is Atmos. It's EMC's um, you know, cloud. E e it's Atmos Online uh, to be, to be uh, thorough. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a profile for that. I'm going to use the Atmos site. Pick the Atmos adapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, go get my connection string. Uh, simple here, you have a user ID and a, and a secret key. Those are the only two values that are required in the connection string. Again, we're going to folder it. We're going to compress it. We're going to go ahead and test that. Uh, test was successful. Hit save. Um, there isn't a good um, Atmos Explorer out there right now. It's still a beta platform. So I whipped something up real quick. This is by no means uh, <laughs> meant to be a uh, a uh, a robust, uh, you know, explorer-like solution for Atmos Online. Um, if I go back over to the Atmos site, now the storage profile has been created. I'm going to upload those same seven documents. Click OK. I'm going to upload those to the SharePoint server, and then it's going to push them up to Atmos. If I go to my little Explorer app here, hit Refresh, You'll see that it's already created a directory structure. Already four of the seven are up there. We'll hit refresh again. Now five of them are up there. And if I click on these, you can see some metadata about them. Um, we can see the size. So again, a lot of these were compressed uh, pretty heavily as they were pushed up there. Once again, we have seven documents. Let me go refresh this again so you can see all seven blobs sitting in Atmos. So again, if I click on any of these, you'll see it's been externalized using the Atmos adapter, the connection string, the folder structure. Um, you could see the file name. It's just a GUID E050. Uh, that would be this document right here. So again, real straightforward. If I go ahead and open that, it comes back pretty quick. I mean, so the performance on this is it, it, from my from my opinion is is pretty snappy. We've done some volume testing and there's really not a sizable difference in both storage and retrieval times between local and you know pushing it up to the cloud. You know it's one of those you know your mileage may vary things, but um, you know for the most part it's it's pretty pretty consistent. Um, the last one we have is um, Amazon S3. So I'm going to go ahead and create a storage profile for that. Externalize using the S3 adapter. I'm going to go get my connection string. Plug that in there. Uh, for this one, similar, you have an access, you have a kind of an access key or a user ID. You have a secret key, a bucket name. So this is a bucket. You can create multiple buckets within S3, and then you can store content within those buckets. Uh, whether or not you want to use SSL and uh, you know a, a default uh, timeout. Again, we're going to folder it. Uh, I'm going to compress it once again. I'm going to go ahead and test that. Again, the test was successful. Um, th there's actually quite a few clients out there for, for S3. This is one I like. It's called uh, Cloudberry. Let me bring it up here. Um, and what it allows you to do is it's, it's not only a, a good way to, to look at you know, the kind of the results of storage point, but it's a nice little tool for you know, moving stuff from your desktop or your servers up, up to the cloud. Um, so if I go over to the Amazon S3 site now, we have a, a, a created uh, profile. Can upload the same seven documents and let that go. Now, if I come back over here, I can refresh this. So this is actually going up to our our account, um, our test account up on uh, up on S3. We created a portal bucket created the folder structure. You can see that as we're going along. And there are oh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven documents. So we've got the seven blobs sitting up there again. You can see they're they've been fairly heavily compressed. If I go look at the details, again it's been externalized using the S3 adapter connection string. Um, so again I'll retrieve one. 
can see again it brings the brings the documents back pretty quick.